All right, uh, Colonel G.E. Cockrell here, and I'm with Pastor Jerry Doris, and this is our Monday morning recap. Yeah. And uh, so this is a, a really a tool in which uh, is hopefully a blessing to the rest of the church uh, to for those that weren't there or weren't able to make it uh, on Sunday morning to hear your sermon, or for those that uh, are like me and just kind of you know, walk away and, and oftentimes forget what we heard. And so this is a way in which to kind of recap uh, some of the, your major points and kind of uh, be able to go over some of those. And uh, if it spikes your fancy, hopefully it does, you can go and hopefully there'll be a, a link provided right here uh, where you can actually watch the entire sermon. We'll do it. Yeah. So Jerry, um, tell me a little bit about um, your sermon yesterday, some of the takeaways and, uh, and the impact that the text had on you. Uh, we were uh, starting the first portion of chapter six of Mark. And uh, so we're just looking at verses 1 through 6, which is the rejection of Christ. Uh, normally, others might skip over that. Yeah. It's not a, uh, some uh, might not find some meat in there to, to you know, sink their teeth into, but uh, we did. And uh, yeah, so that's what we looked at was the rejection of Christ. It was really the theme of our serv- uh, service, really. So Jesus goes back to Nazareth. Um, and with the intention of doing miracles, doing what he's been doing all along, yep. uh, his earthly ministry, and things don't go well. Yep, same message, same power is available. It's a ministry uh, trip, it's not a social trip, um, and uh, they acknowledge that. They they get it. They know why he's there. They can they've observed. Uh, you got to understand the distance. It's probably about fifteen miles away from where he was just ministering. Sure. Uh, the area of Galilee is probably the size of Shelby County and Henry County combined, maybe a little bit bigger than that. And so he's about from Shelbyville to Eminence. Right. Is the distance. Right. They know how this works. Sure. They know the message. They know this kind of stuff. And so uh, they reject him. Uh, what's really interesting about this passage is that, you know, scripture is not uh, like your Facebook feed. Yeah. In your Facebook feed, it's all the good things For sure. all lined up or all the fun things or funny things. You know, we may put some silly stuff out there and make fun of ourselves, but it's to create a narrative that life is so fun. Life is good. We're having a good time all the time. Uh, you know, scripture's not like that. No. It, it includes this really disappointing moment where everything comes to a screeching halt and there's no, uh, uh, you know, no, nobody really wants to hear from Jesus. They don't want to, they don't want to. He's not the hometown boy. You, well, yeah, you would think he'd get a hometown welcome. Yeah. I mean, these people know him best and, and they don't, they don't treat him that way. So what we looked at yesterday was uh, Jesus's availability. Mm-hmm. He's available to do and say the same things that everybody else is getting. Uh, but the problem of familiarity, they, they know him too well. And uh, the the misnomer here is that the, the that idea that familiarity breeds contempt sure. is that the longer you're with somebody, the more you see their faults. Mm. Well, Jesus doesn't have any faults, <laughs> right? And so what they look at instead is, hey, we know, uh, uh, isn't this Jesus the carpenter? You know, I, I'm sitting in this this chair that's I've, I've had been you know five years. It's still squeaking. It's starting to squeak now. Sure, that's the guy. You want me to worship him? Or uh, what's the, you know, his look at his mom, which is an interesting thing. They mention his mom, but they don't mention his dad in this passage. Yeah. And it makes you wonder, is there a little bit of the reputation, you know? Oh, that's, uh, that's uh, Mary's son, Nudge. Right. You know, I wonder who dad is. Right. Uh, type of yeah, a, a thought. Very interesting. Um, we know his brothers. We know his sisters. They can't find fault with Jesus, but they fa- find fault the fact that he has... Uh, a human side, yeah, and so they they get hung up on the incarnation. Go ahead. That's very possible that uh, that Jude was in the audience, that James was in the audience that rejected him, uh, the, the brothers and possibly sisters of Jesus, right? Yep. yep. Um, and so here we see, you know, this is one of the things I love about the Bible is the honesty, right? It, it, it it's, it's authentic. It's authentic. If it was written by man. Man would be the hero, yeah. But man's not the hero, yeah. right? Man's the villain, and yeah. Jesus is the hero. the The third thing that we looked at was the seeming inability of Jesus to right. heal, and uh, the the word faith movement uh, latches onto this passage. And uh, I, I've heard uh, he's since passed away, but Miles Monroe he was being interviewed by Benny Hinn uh, down in the Caribbean, and he was talking about how uh, God needs a human agent to give permission on earth in order for things to happen. And if God doesn't have that permission, he can do nothing in the world. And so this is why he sent Jesus, so that he could have a human agent to to do things. 
Uh, and then we as believers, we have to give permission to Jesus. And see, even Jesus himself can't heal in his own hometown. He's bound by the law of faith. And it's just such utter nonsense. Permanent gymnastics. Yeah, it, it's really bad. I, I believe that the role of a pastor is to, uh, to protect his flock. You yeah. know, take that charge that Paul gave to the Ephesian elders to say, be on guard for the flock. Well, how do we do that? We do that by knowing the bad theology that our our congregations are hearing and uh, protecting them from that, uh, dismantling that for them, and then inoculating them to it in case they hear those kind of things. And this is one of those areas. Well, faith is what brings you to Christ. Amen. I can have little faith that brings me to Christ, or great faith that brings me to Christ, but I'm still at the right place. Yeah. And the the the. the false thought of uh, the word faith movement is that I've got to have all this great faith and if I don't have great faith then I either have sin in my life or I have don't have enough faith that's why things aren't happening the way that I want them to it's just utter nonsense it's foreign to this they weren't going to Jesus yeah. they weren't entrusting themselves to Jesus so and, and this isn't foreign to us right this isn't a problem that's only going on at TBN headquarters in Florida right no. this, we had we, we had uh, a pastor and his wife show up at the prayer station yeah that was full on word of faith. Um, you know, I don't think he knew that though. Right. It so permeates our, our thinking that oh, you've got to decree this or you've got to say these kind of things, and it's just sad. I I, I think it's uh, I don't know just because we're pastoring here in in uh, Shelby County, but it seems pervasive around here. The word faith movement is everywhere. It really is. Yeah. yeah. It really is. So um, I hope that uh, this has kind of spiked your tone uh, to really. Uh, be equipped and be prepared uh, for when you do um, uh, encounter some of these folks. And this uh, verse is used out of context. Yeah. Right? Because it will be. Well, let me stop you here. Yeah. That's just one of the things. The last thing we would probably need to point out is that we tied this into our biblical theology Amen. ideas. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the point of this passage? Well, this fits into this narrative that goes all the way back to Genesis 1, and that is the rejection of God. Yes. God comes, he, he makes the world, uh, gives, uh, gives a rule. We violate those rules. We reject him. We reject the, I mean, they were walking sinless in intimacy with God, and yet they rejected him. And then you see that through the history of Israel and the prophets. You think about what Stephen said. He goes, which of the prophets did you not kill? Absolutely. You know, and then we arrive in our text, and it's a foreshadowing of the cross. His hometown rejects him. And then we get to the cross, and they, this nation rejects him, and they murder him at the hands of the, of, of, uh, the Romans. And then you get into the New Testament. Oh, foolish Galatians. You know, re rejection continues, and it even continues today in the church. Yes. Prayerlessness yeah. is rejection of a sovereign God. Amen. Worry and anxiety are rejections that God could give me something in my life for, for me to trust him with. Uh, so rejection is a theme that will continue until Christ comes, we all bow our knees. Yes. We either bow our knees in adoration or we bow our knees in submission. Amen. Yeah. Well, uh, wonderful being able to uh, sit, in, sit in your teaching, uh, Pastor. And, Praise uh, God. Uh, I look forward to... Um, our GAT study on Thursday night yep. at 6 and um, prayer station uh, Friday. Friday night. Yeah, so a lot of ways in which to participate uh, in the body here at Reformation Church Shelbyville. So uh, until next week, Colonel, Pastor, out. Yeah.